They have a research budget. Is there a Microsoft person in the house? Their research budget is around eight billion U.S. a year, or so. It's huge. It's probably more than all spent in Ireland on R&D by a lot. If you think that Microsoft would be challenged, who would challenge such a giant with such a huge research budget? It would have to be someone equally as big with the equal resources to put into research and development challenge of an IBM, SAP, Oracle, an HP, somebody of that sort. But yet, if you look at the history of Microsoft over the last decade or two, and where did the challenges come from? And there are three in particular that I'd like to address. <coughs> the first came from the University of Illinois, or actually is a supercomputing laboratory associated with the University of Illinois. And it was a couple of researchers came up with something called the Internet Browser. Mark Andreessen <coughs> formed Netscape out of that activity. <coughs> But a couple of researchers in the university almost brought Microsoft to their knees, <coughs> caused Microsoft to change their entire business plan and business structure. If that wasn't bad enough, a couple of researchers out of Stanford decided that something called the Internet Directory was an interesting topic. It might have some application. Jerry Yang et al. and Yahoo. Major challenge to Microsoft. The third major, major challenge to Microsoft over the last couple of decades, again, a couple of researchers from Stanford who decided that an internet search engine was a kind of an interesting topic. So you get a couple of graduate students who create Google. Now, how is it possible that a major corporation with $8 billion research budget gets challenged by two graduate students from Stanford, or another two graduate students from Stanford, or a couple of folks from the University of Illinois. They get challenged because that is the power of the idea, and the power of the idea that comes out of the University of Iowa. But there's also another subtlety here that you have to recognize. If those ideas had been created in major corporations, what would have happened to them? There's something that a major corporation called a chief financial officer. And the chief financial officer's job in life is to protect the assets of the company. And so you come to the chief financial officer with an idea, and you say, I've got this idea for an internet search engine. And the chief financial officer says, you know, you know, Craig, you know, his budgets are tight this year, and We've got all this other stuff that we have to do. And I've got projects lined up to create the next 39 microprocessors and so forth and so on. Uh, tell me what the ROI is going to be on this internet search engine. And you say, you know, I really don't know. I have no idea how we'll monetize this. It's really cool technology, though, Mr. CFO. And Mr. CFO will immediately send you to the back of the line and say, you know, come back in 10 years and we'll see if we have a few extra dollars to fund that. Corporations, by their very nature, are not designed to fund those innovative ideas. They are designed to spend their development dollars basically funding current product lines, extending product lines, being competitive in the marketplace. It's one of the reasons that, that companies like Intel, for example, uh, recognize this and create entirely separate venture capital organizations just to fund ideas outside of the company to be complementary to the country as opposed to try to fund those ideas inside the company. So you and the university have this terribly unique position. You're in the job of creating smart people. Your research activities are designed to create those smart ideas. And then you throw off both of those, and maybe you get a few faculty members in the process, into the marketplace to pursue those smart ideas with passion, without the CFO sitting there saying, no, you can't do this. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that's the future of Ireland. I know that's the future of the United States. 
And quite frankly, if we don't pursue that with vigor and energy and passion and resource, there is no future. Because our lunch will be eaten by someone else. There are too many people around the world who are already committed to make these investments in education and research. And if we want to enjoy the standard of living we currently have today and see that grow, the only thing we can do is outsmart them and outwork them and outthink them. And that's what's going to come from your efforts here. Thank you.